Hello, my pretties. Welcome to a Halloween version of Create with Miss Carrie. Today, I have a fun witch project. We're going to create our own magic cauldron by creating a project using color, art supplies, and a few items from your kitchen. So it's gonna be lots of fun. And to get us excited about our witchy art project, I have the perfect book. It's called Color Magic by Stephen J. Simmons. It was a bright sunny morning and a witch named Alice was teaching her pet butterfly, Grace, to fly in circles. She thought this trick might amuse small children. When Alice asked Grace if she was getting dizzy, Grace turned her wings into a bright turquoise, which meant no. When Grace wanted to say yes, she turned her wings flaming pink. Greta was another witch, very different from Alice. Greta preferred to use her magical powers to stir up trouble. She also had a pet, a purple snake named Ormond. She was busy that morning casting a spell that made Ormond tie himself in knots and stick out his tongue. Greta snickered, knowing this would scare small children. When Greta got bored with Ormond, she thought about what new mischief she might cause. She was still angry at Alice for putting an end to one of her devious schemes by landing her in a puddle of bug juice. Greta kept a giant sparkling green emerald, which would glow and suggest diabolical spells when she rubbed it. She used it now. Soon a picture of Alice appeared in the emerald. She had turned into a bat and was hanging upside down. Greta laughed loudly and kept rubbing. Next came a picture of Ormond, popping Alice's favorite balloons with his tongue. Greta cackled with delight, but she kept rubbing, and after a while, the emeralds showed Alice dressed in bright pink, Alice with her beautiful butterfly, Alice watering bright flowers, and Alice painting pretty pictures. Alice's love of colorful things inspired Greta to come up with a wonderfully wicked idea. I'll make sure that pink goody two-shoes won't be able to enjoy her butterfly, flowers, and painting anymore. Greta waved her wand and chanted, Roses are red and violets are blue. These are the colors I hate through and through. The red and blue in Alice's favorite flowers vanished at once. The color blue color of the sky, oceans, and blue jays, and the red color of fire engines, apples, and valentines, all the things Alice loved, disappeared from the earth. The sapphire and ruby in Alice's only two rings lost their luster as their colors drained away. A robin Alice liked covered his dull chest in shame. But Greta was far from done. The next morning she cackled. Orange, orange, now disappear. You're a terrible color I do not want here. Alice's orange balloons couldn't be seen and her favorite morning drink, orange juice, looked just like water. All she could see of her plastic pumpkin was the smiling face. Later that afternoon, Greta pointed her wand and chanted, Abra goodbye to the color pink. It's a color that really does stink. Pink disappeared from Alice's clothing and from two other things she really liked, cotton candy and clouds at sunset. When Alice asked Grace if she was okay, Grace had no way of saying yes. Pleased with the results of her nasty spells, Greta waved her wand all around and shouted, Frog guts and lizard eyes to every color I say goodbye. And all the color in the land disappeared. Just as soon as Greta had finished this chant, she looked all around and realized she had gone too far. Where was her favorite color, yucky green? Where was the green of her hat in her clothes? How could she use her precious green emerald? 
She quickly yelled, Green, green, yucky green, return right now to this awful scene. The color green instantly reappeared and Greta smiled. She was happy again, but everyone else was still upset. Greta's friend Tim, who was a troll, complained to her about losing the red color in his hair. He had loved his red hair. Alice was fuming. Where were Grace's colors? Where were the magnificent colors of her roses, violets, lilacs, and lilies? Where were her hat's pink shine? Without color, all of these things were bland and boring. I know Greta is behind this, she thought. A school art class had just finished painting pictures of their homes when Greta's spell struck. The children, who had been proud of their work at first, now had tears in their eyes. The only colored part of their pictures were the tree trops, get grass, a sweater, and a few green doors. Two peacocks ran into the bushes, embarrassed by their drab feathers. A chameleon that changed his colors to hide himself from bigger animals became very confused and curled up in a ball. A brother and sister watching a beautiful rainbow were upset to see all of the colors except green disappear. And boys and girls everywhere were sad. Where were the colors of their special pajamas, their favorite toys, and their stuffed animals? How could they decide what clothing to put on them in the morning? Where were the different colors of the children's hair and eyes and faces? Without these differences, every boy and girl looked the same, and the world was dull and uninteresting. After a while, even Greta got tired of just the color yucky green. She missed seeing the orange of her spiders and the purple of her snake ormond. She missed the red of Tim's hair, and she missed the colors of the shirts and sweaters and hats and socks and all the different faces of girls and boys that she liked to bother. She became sh sad and shed a great big green tear. Meanwhile, Alice had decided to teach Greta a lesson. She would return the missing colors to the world, but she would make Greta's favorite yucky green disappear. Let's see how Greta likes that, she said to herself. Alex snuck up on Greta and pointed her wand, remembering the most important lesson at witch school, the broomerang principle, she whispered. Whatever you chant, whatever you brew, sooner or later it comes back to you. The world was full of color again, except for green. Once more, Greta's hat, clothes, emerald, and wand were colorless. First, she was shocked, and then she was angry. She quickly decided to repeat the chant that had worked before. Shaking her wand, Greta screamed, Green, green, yucky green, return right now to this awful scene. But the spell didn't work this time. Neither Greta nor Alice could believe what happened. Instead of bringing back the color green, the spell mixed up all the colors. Alice and Greta realized that their color magic had gotten out of hand. Alice confronted Greta and said, We need to work together and get this straightened out. Greta had to agree. They talked about the magic spells they studied at witch school and finally decided that one particular might work. Together they chanted, Sun, moon, stars, and sea put all colors where they should be. The spell worked. All the colors of the world returned to their normal places. Both witches were so delighted they did flying circles with their brooms. To make up for having started the mess, Greta dropped millions of colored lollipops on school playgrounds for children to enjoy. She sent a swarm of butterflies for Alice to play with, and she planted pretty flowers on the side of the mountain. Grace was so happy she kept flashing her wings flaming pink. Ormond looked in the mirror, relieved his purple had returned. The peacocks came out from the bushes and proudly spread their feathers. The chameleon crawled onto an orange leaf and grinned as he turned orange. Tim beamed as he combed his red hair. And smiles returned to the faces of children everywhere.
The world once again had shades of difference that make it interesting, beautiful, and magical. Alice didn't know what to say. She had never known Greta to correct a mistake like this. Maybe she had learned the broomerang principle. But as Alice flew over to thank Greta, she stopped. She saw Greta throw some bugs and lizards into her cauldron and heard her chant, Time to brew, time to bubble, time to stir up some nasty trouble. Maybe Greta will never learn, thought Alice. But Alice thanked Greta anyway for helping her bring back the magic of color. She then got on her broom and flew under a splendid rainbow into the bright blue sky. The end. The witch Greta in our book that we read had a big witch's cauldron, which is a giant black pot that she brewed up new potions. And you saw her dropping all sorts of bugs and weird things in there to make her potion. We're going to make our own witch's cauldron today, but we're going to have some amazing colors flying out of it a rainbow of colors so that we can make a rainbow potion. So let's get started. We're going to be starting by drawing with a pencil just so we can get our cauldron just right. Let's start at the bottom of our page and I'm going to draw a skinny oval. Sometimes I go around and around to get it just right. All right, there's my skinny oval. It looks like a little hot dog sitting on our page, but we're gonna turn that into the opening of our cauldron. So I'm going to draw a big pot that goes all the way from one side of that oval to the other side. I'm gonna go down, around, and back up. Once you have the cauldron, the shape that you want, let's give it a couple of little feet. Cauldron's big and heavy, so it needs some little feet to prop it up. So those are two little rectangles that are, look like feet down there. <clears throat> now that we have our pot ready, let's add an inside to it so we can look down and see the colors. So I just did a little curved line that stretched from one side all the way to the other side. So now it looks like we can see down inside of it. And I'm just gonna clean up my lines a little bit before we start coloring. Okay, now that we have our big pot in place, let's start coloring it. I have a black oil pastel, or you can use a black crayon if you want. You could even use some watercolors if you wanted to paint this. And I'm going to outline it and then color it in. Okay, let's color. And sometimes when I'm wanting to make my crayon or oil pastel really dark, once I color in one direction, I'll go in the other direction too, and that just makes it even darker. Let's get those little feet. And I'm gonna go around and make the oval shape nice and thick. I'm not gonna color it in yet though. All right, I'm going to color just the part that goes down to this line because this 
is the potion that's inside. So now we can get a whole bunch of colors, any colors you want. Maybe I'll do some of this pretty color and just do some squiggles and swirls. I have to get my favorite color in there, of course. I'm gonna add some turquoise to it. And how about some green? Okay, we are going to go back to our pencil and now we're going to create some beautiful swirls that are coming out of our pot. So these can be any shape you want. I like to make them big loops. So I'm going to go up and loop and then curl and do a spiral. Let's see if I can do that again in a different way. I'm gonna come up, this time I'm gonna loop the other way. Loop, curl, spiral. It almost looks like a flower, doesn't it? Let's do one kind of leaning out this way. Maybe this one is just kind of going up the side. And this one will go up that side. And we have room for one more kind of coming up the edge. So let's just do a spiral on both sides. Maybe there's a few little bubbles up there too. There we go. All right, now here's the fun part of today's project. I'm gonna take some glue and I'm going to trace my lines that I just did with this glue and then we're going to sprinkle them with salt. What? Is that crazy or what? But I have a reason for doing this. All right, so see how I just traced my line? And you just need a little line. You don't need a big squirt for this project. You can even drag your bottle of glue on the line and that'll help you follow the line and also not put too much out. Also, I'm gonna get those little bubbles. Okay, so I have glue all over and now I'm gonna be ready to add some salt. Now this is a little crazy, um, but it turned out really, really cool. So I have just normal salts that we put in the salt shaker in my kitchen, and I'm going to carefully sprinkle it on top of that glue, kind of like adding glitter to your art project. Okay, now this project requires us to take a break. The glue needs to sit and dry and that salt will soak into the glue and it'll stick. And then we have one final part of our project. So take a break and when we come back, we'll do the rest of the project. Okay, so we have waited until our glue has dried and we still have a lot of extra salt on here. So this is where you need a grown-up's help because we don't want them to get mad at us for putting salt all over the table and floor. You want to carefully take it to the trash can and dump it down in there and give it a little shake and even tap it on the back just to get that extra salt off of there. Now it's time to add some color. So I'm gonna use some watercolors. I've got a paintbrush and then I have a bowl of water. We're going to make all of these swirly curly things become beautiful colors. And we're gonna choose some colors that are either warm colors or cool colors. Warm colors are the colors 
that remind you of the sun, fire, things that are warm. So our reds, our oranges, our yellows, even pinks can be warm colors. And then cool colors are the colors that remind you of water or the mountains or the sky or ice. So blues and purples and greens would all be nice cool colors. I'm gonna start with my warm colors and I got a little water. I swirled it around in my paint and I'm going to just touch the top of the salt and let the paint drip onto that salt. So see how the salt is kind of soaking up the paint and spreading it? Let's see what happens if we switch to another warm color. So if I was going around the rainbow, I would go from yellow to orange. So let's try an orange. All right, I have lots of orange on my brush. And I'm gonna start adding that. All right, let's finish up with some red on this one. So I cleaned my brush. I have some red. And we're gonna finish up this one with red. Let's see what would happen if we did cool colors. <clears throat> How about let's start with a light green color for our cool colors. Let's see, I'll start at the bottom just like I did before. And I'm just touching the top of the salt and it's soaking it up. All right, let's switch to my favorite color, turquoise. Ooh, that's pretty. Maybe let's end with blue. All right. Nice. All right, let's keep going. You can use all the colors that you have. Ooh, that's pretty. But for each one of these, let's try to keep them either warm or cool. So I'm gonna do another warm one. Let's see, this time I'm gonna start with orange. And then I'll go to red. And then I'm gonna finish with this pinkish purple color. Beautiful. All right, let's do another cool one. I'm gonna start with a dark green this time to see what that looks like. <clears throat> and then let's do a blue. And I'm gonna try a dark purple. All right, we have a couple more to do. Let's do orange. and red, and then we'll make this last one a cool color. <clears throat> so this time I think I'm gonna start with the turquoise. And then go to purple. Look how magical that looks. So this just needs to dry a little bit and then you have the perfect 
Color Magic Cauldron. I hope you had fun making this today. I will see you soon. Bye.